Hi guys, welcome. We are doing a phenomenal review today on a $13 million Toronto historical house. I can't wait to show you what's going on in here. Come on inside. So I always get super excited when I'm about to do a project for this builder because they actually follow the trends and we see a lot of them in this house. So there's a lot of beautiful paneling, a lot of the finishes, pay attention to the details because you can definitely pick up some pointers. So I'm standing in the foyer right now and typically the homes that we do, the foyers are, I would say more open concept, whereas this one is kind of more enclosed, which is nice because it adds a little bit of privacy where people don't get to see throughout your whole house. I have a beautiful light fixture above me. The floor is done in a beautiful dark granite with white veining going through, which adds a lot of character, I feel, instead of doing something completely solid. And we decided to accent with our console table and you'll notice there's a lot of brass going around the house so i definitely would bring it with my furniture and my accessories so we decided to do an artwork sitting on the console because this is all panel and when you have mdf on the wall you don't want to be putting holes in there because it's definitely hard to repair afterwards. We have this built-in ledge where it was not really functional because you can't really put accessories on it, it's not deep enough. So we just leaned our mirror on it and I feel like the brass with my gold mirror goes really well. And we wanted to add a little bit of punch of color. So we did a blue ottoman, has beautiful tufting on it. And it's in like a velvety suede material, which adds a little bit of more luxury than doing, say, a linen. Sometimes you come across homes that you do not have the most ideal spaces. And this is one of those homes because it's a historical house. The trick is with these types of homes, you cannot change the structure of the house. So anything you wanna do is basically a facelift or a full remodel. You cannot be breaking down what's on the outside. So that does create a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to style a house like this because you have odd spaces like what I'm standing in right now. This is kind of off of the foyer area leading into the living room and then you have a nice hallway that goes into the dining room. So what do you do with a space like this? I would consider it something along the lines of creating a sitting space. For staging purposes, we didn't want to block by putting big accent chairs. So what I did was I added my stools, which I love these guys because I can use them in so many different spaces. They're in like a metal finish and it's like bronze and it has gold webbing on it, which gives it a lot of character, I feel. So I feel like they worked out really well in the window. And on this side of the wall, I would have loved to have done another form of seating or a console table, but check this out, guys. You have a built-in closet. So to all the builders out there, use your space wisely. I always say this, if you feel like you have a nook that's not usable, don't just waste it, create something custom. And I mean, who doesn't love extra storage space, right? So we have double closet doors with shelving. And when you close it, you don't see it because all the paneling that's on the wall is carried through on the doors, kind of like a hidden closet, like a secret closet. So our living room space is just off to the foyer area. We didn't want to clutter up with too many big pieces, so we did our sofa. Now I'm going to say something. Because we had a little bit of a limit on this wall, as you see, the walls are irregular shaped. I prefer to do an end table beside my sofa because I wanted this table lamp. One of the reasons I wanted the table lamp is because I cannot put up artwork behind me because of all the paneling and the MDF. So that kind of takes away from the drama that I can have in this room. So I needed another piece to act as a substitute for art. So I decided to do this beautiful bronze table lamp on my glass table and I feel like it worked out well because just on this seat you have three, plus you have two accent chairs on this side of the fireplace. And then we did our coffee table. We did an end table to match the coffee table and my beautiful 8x10 silk rug that I love because it's all geometric shaped, 
has a little bit of a gray in it on top of the white, which adds texture, but not overwhelming for the space. So we're standing in the formal dining room, and I have to admit, even without the furniture in here, when I first came in for the consultation, this room really wowed me because of this light fixture. I feel like it's so special because the glass is not just like regular glass. It looks deformed, but it gives it a lot of character. Whereas the other style of this light fixture is just like a simple clear glass. This one is almost like a smoked glass and it has like texture to it, which I think is super cool. So we decided to use our brass base table with a glass top. One of the reasons I did that and I didn't do a solid wood was because these walls are all here and it's not fully open concept where I need to have solid pieces to ground the space. I actually needed to kind of air it out. So we decided to do an eight seater glass top table, my beautiful, one of my favorite barrel back chairs. And it's almost in like a tweed fabric and it has black legs and gold shoes, which are absolutely perfect. Then we did our dark wood sideboard, which is also really cool because it has these like, blocked effect to it, which I feel is really nice and it gives it a lot of character. Again, we couldn't put up art, so I had to choose a really oversized canvas and put it on top of here, kind of lean it on and not put in any holes. We did some table lamps, accessories, my bowl of moss, my favorites, and we did a 9 by 12 rug here. And the reason I did 9 by 12 is because I wanted it to be a little bit more full versus closer to the chairs. So right now I have about two feet on either side of my chairs that are sticking out and really filling up the space. So isn't it fitting that this $13 million home has two entrances that come from the foyer and the dining room into your family room and kitchen. I love that concept. Actually, it works out really well. Again, this wall over here in between creates a lot of privacy from what's going on on the other side of the house. Now, some people that actually use their living room area in the front of the house as entertaining area, and if they have you know, their kids just sitting here doing their own thing, this wall here creates a lot of privacy for what's going on on this side of the house. So we're standing in the family room right now, and they have a great wall unit that they've done here. I mean, there isn't much space to create shelving, so they did it underneath, and what we did was we added our oversized mirror here because the space is not that big, so we wanted to keep it a little bit airy versus putting up like a solid art piece. So we have that going there. Then we have our sofa here. And again, I had to keep it a little bit smaller in size because the island, the kitchen island is right beside this. And if I'm gonna have clearance for people to walk through the house effortlessly, it's going to have to be a small sofa. It cannot be anything oversized. So you guys have to be always mindful of the pieces that you choose and the allowance of space that you have in the room. So we did our wood top table with brass details and I have an 8x10 rug here, which is also, it has texture to it, it has a pattern to it, it has all of the colors I've used on top on the floor, which is also important because you don't want everything to clash. You want a flow when you're staging. Then we have this side of the room, which is again, in a historical home, you cannot be changing the structure. So it's almost like a nook, like a bay window. So what we did here was I added our Barcelona chair. So it's leather, it's airy. I wanted it to be black because I do have a lot of black going on around the house. And we did an accent table with it with just some light accessories to create the vision of this is an added space to your family room. It's a sitting area. You could potentially do a love seat if you wanted to, to make it more full, which I think would be a good idea if you are actually living here. But for staging purposes, we wanted it light, we wanted it to be airy, and just to give the illusion of. A portion of our family room is extended, but it's not really usable space. And this was my dilemma. What do I do with this nook here? So I decided vase and some greenery just to, you know, not leave it empty and to bring in some, you know, life. You have it on the outside, you have the patio outside here, there's lots of green trees. So just kind of bring that in, 
keep the flow and move forward. So let's just go over here. And again, this was one of those spaces I didn't want to leave empty. We added a console table, put up a really cool mirror. I added some of my branches. I love bringing like natural stuff in the house. I feel like it's very calming and soothing. And we did our dark wood table with brass details. Again, carried through with the rest of our furniture and the rest of the house. We have a double kitchen going on here. We have the main kitchen that's on the forefront and then we have a hidden kitchen in the back and that's where you do all your cooking. So what we're standing in right now is our main kitchen. They did like an L-shaped island here, which is fine. I mean, it takes up, if this piece was not here, it might have been a little bit too narrow for the space, but I feel like it worked out that they came out with it, which is great. Then we have our backsplash done, same as the countertop. We accessorized with some greenery to bring in some color. So the countertop on the back of the kitchen is matching the island in the front. And what they've done with the backsplash here is they've done like a frosted glass, which is great because I feel like if you have little oil stains, you might not see it as much as you would if it was dark. And then they did the white, just complete, flush cabinetry, not much sheen to it, which is nice. I think the sheen would make it a little bit too modern if it was like done in like a high gloss. So I like that they did like a matte finish with it. Then they have some open concept shelving, which is good if you're organized. If you're not an organized person, I mean, I don't know if this would work too well for you, but we just put on some accessories and just brought in some color to give it some life. Then we have a custom fridge here built in. So we have a fridge and a small freezer. So we also do have a wine fridge or a beverage cooler here, which is fantastic for all of you wine enthusiasts. And look, you get the shelving, comes out, and this is fantastic. I love the finish they did in here. It's in like a dark bronze color, kind of cool in there too. Then we have this nook over here, which gives us space to put in like a breakfast table, which is important in every house. Guys, if you ever come and cross properties, you do not have obvious space for a breakfast table, make sure you create one if possible. Whatever you have to do, even a two seater, because people want to see that. And I've noticed in homes when we don't show a breakfast area, it's like one of the first feedback that comes in. So you want to make sure that you get everything down, check mark all your spaces. This is one of them. So we did a four seater glass top chrome base and we added our greens. Green is going throughout the house. So I felt like it was fitting to do it here too. And I actually love this arrangement here because it's not like a full blossom or a flower. It kind of is like little balls, like stuffed up balls, which kind of makes it look really creative and cool. And we finished it off with some sand. So if you do want to see us doing a video on how to style flower arrangements, other ideas to replace flower arrangements for accessorizing, make sure you like this video because if we hit 2000 likes on this video, I will make sure that's the next thing we do. We make a video to show you how to make your space extra special. This could have been a potentially really dark space, but I like the fact that they have wall sconces on both sides and there is wall lighting all over here going across the staircase, which is great for nighttime, I feel, because if all of your lights are off and you just need to go downstairs and grab something, you just turn the hall lights on and you're good to go. With plenty of pot lights going through, because again, we don't have a lot of natural light here. So guys, you know it's important, your lighting is everything. Oh, here's another double door master bedroom. I love this. Guys, this principal bedroom turned out so beautiful. It's really amazing to me when I come to these properties and they're completely empty. And then I go through the planning phase with my team, come up with a concept. Obviously it requires us to have the perfect pieces on time for the project, but I feel like in this project it worked out well because look how beautifully everything matches each other. We have our king headboard, which is framed in a gray wood 
and upholstered fabric. Then we matched it with our beautiful nightstands. I've done this before in another project and it worked out really well. And I'm so lucky I had both pieces in again because I feel like they're a match made in heaven. And this one is a little bit more of a distressed wood. So you're not saying that it's like matchy matchy. It is a little bit different, but they really complement each other well. It has three drawers. We did our brass table lamps. My circular mirrors, I love these guys because they're in like a pewter finish. So it's not so much of a brass and it's not a silver. It's kind of like an in-between tone which goes with both sides of the spectrum. Then we have a little sitting area in the window, which we did in our gray chairs. My Spider-Man end tables, I love these guys. Then we come across here, we have our wall unit with our fireplace and we added a piece of art and again this art piece has all of the colors used on this side flowing through the other side of the room the principal ensuite this one is really special so it has a seamless floor and a curbless shower which is fantastic because it makes the space feel bigger and it feels a lot more luxurious, I would say, than having to step up and into. You just kind of go inside to have a nice bench, custom built. I am kind of in between about all of the patterns going on here. So I find the mosaics a little bit busy for the statorial floors that they've done. But it does give it character. It does give it a lot of life. These pendants here, there's like four, five, six, seven lights just on this one vanity. And again, for a historical house where you cannot be changing your space or modifying your space, they've done pretty well with it. Love this oval, oval. Um, it's almost like an egg-shaped tub, which is low profile. I would definitely put window treatments here. Oh, and they did. They have the roller shades coming down because obviously you want privacy. The street we're on right now is a pretty busy street, so you would get a lot of traffic. There is a park right across from you, so obviously you want your privacy. Typically, our homes are... We have a basement, we have a main floor, and we have an upper floor. This one has an upper, upper floor. So let's go, I wanna show you what's going on here. So because we don't have an office on the main floor and this house is not short of bedrooms, we decided to use the upper floor as like a study area, a workspace. This is one of those rooms that we created more of like a working station. So we did our desk, beautiful eight by 10 rug, and again, I wanted to bring in the black elements because our light fixture is in a black finish with another Barcelona chair, black end table, again, like a black and white theme, bring in some gold. I have the gold going in my artwork. So it's important to create a flow and we did that. We brought it in from the main floor to the second floor to the third floor. This space here is used really, I would say multi-purpose. It could be used for storage spaces. It could be used as like a kitchen area because they have a beverage cooler. Then obviously the open concept shelving, which we added accessories on. And then the bedroom actually over here, we have our queen size bed. Again, we did the distress nightstands in a different look, different style, more fitting for a smaller bedroom because the one in the principal bedroom is actually oversized. So we did our queen and again, we have the brass frame, which is really cool. I feel like it kind of flows with the rest of the house and table lamps, accessories, artwork on the other side. We have a beautiful light fixture here. I feel like this is a little dressy for a fifth bedroom, but it works out really well. It's really glamorous and bright. Guys, lighting, lighting, lighting. Then on this side, I wanna show you these windows here. I feel like they're dwarfed. It's like below my eye level, but again, this is what you get in a historical house. You cannot change this. If this was a custom house, we'd probably have floor to ceiling windows to bring in more lighting, but we don't. So what we did was we kept it light, we kept it neutral, we kept it airy. So the space doesn't overwhelm you. So we have a challenge going. Don't forget it, I need 2,000 likes to make a video on how to accessorize and create beautiful flower arrangements. I'm counting on you guys to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel, and we will have the next video ready for you soon. See you next time.